Hi guys, Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, I need it today. What does that mean? It means that we're lacking something, so we need something to fulfill that space, right? It could be I need that report done by the end of the day. It could be I need to fulfill my work obligations today or whatever. But when we look inside ourselves into the spiritual and we say, you know what, I really needed this today. It means that we're relying on an external force to give us something to fill a void within ourselves. I need it today. So today I'm going to explain how to change this around and make this I need me today. Oh, you ready? Let's go there. When we say I need me today, that is when we start relying on our own energy to create that fulfillment that we think that we're lacking. So if we're sad and we say, oh man, I could really use a pet me up today talk. I really wish that I I want to go and watch a really funny movie to make me feel better, right? But when we're sad and we say, I need me to make me feel good today, what we're doing there is taking our own authority and creating our own energy without relying on something external like that feel good movie right? It will help. And I will go there. It always makes us feel good when we watch a good movie, right? Okay. But it's fulfilling that within ourselves is when we get our power and our drive, our motivation, our enthusiasm. And then our lives start getting even better than they are now. Because what I find is when we go and do something external, to make us feel better like watching a good movie how do you feel an hour after that movie finished yes you're still in there oh yeah that was such a good movie it was so good but then as time goes on it starts to dwindle away and then you're back to your own little world of hurt you get sad again so we've got to be able to create this within ourselves okay i will go there over the last few days There has been a lot of sadness around the world, okay? People are seeing all these now really sad stories in the news. Um, I don't want to go into it because YouTube algorithms will bite me. But when we look at all this stuff that's going on now and we say, oh my God, I'm so sad. You know, I really need to pick me up. I've got a person who's not well or my animal isn't going so well. How do we get through this and create this energy of our own where we're going to survive and be okay ultimately, okay? So it's not saying I need it today. It's I need me today. I need me to make me happy. I need me to be that love machine that's going to make me have the goosebumps all day today and I'm going to sit here yay okay so how do we do it we sit there and we get calm and we think about all the good stuff that we've ever done this is a good one okay you might have gone back to say when you were five and you went to a theme park or you, the first time you went to the beach when you were a kid or when you went out fishing or the day you caught a butterfly or the first day you learnt to swim or the first time you went for a walk in the bush, <sighs> national park, whatever you want to call it, the first time you went on a plane. Think about the good experiences that you've done and then you relive those moments within your head because it's already you who's done this so you create that memory as a reality now so you sit there and you say i remember what it was like when i did that okay i remember how good i felt when i did that so that 
experience. We relive it again. So again, we're rebuilding all that greatness about ourselves that I think I can, I think I can. Okay? So we're not relying on how we feel about something else. Because ultimately, there's one thing here, guys, that we must remember, and this is big. We all have life lessons and we all have life contracts. Every single thing that happens is meant to be. There are no coincidences. There are no, oh, what luck. How unfortunate was that? Moments. Everything happens for a reason. Every single situation that we come across in our lives is meant to be. So when somebody gets ill or a pet gets ill, that's teaching us lessons. How do we learn how much we care about something unless it gets hurt? I remember when Mary, my cat, came to my house. It was seven years ago when I moved in here. She turned up pregnant. Neighbours said that she was a, had a couple of litters. She lives on the street. I fed her a few times. I put a water bottle outside. But it wasn't until I went away for a week and I came back and I saw this cat up on the windowsill absolutely fretting, wanting to come in. So I opened the door and she came inside and it was like it was a long lost love that she hadn't seen for 20 years. And I thought to myself, my God, this cat missed me. This cat loves me. So Mary now lives inside my house. She's asleep on my bed in the next room. And she's a huge cat now because she's obviously dissexed. I've looked after her. You know, I give her um, her injections and her flea and worm tablets every month. And she gets a lot of treats. But it's only when we go through something low, lower vibration sadness or grief that we realize how good it is up here you know when I was in heaven and I love going back to my story about that what happened to me when I died in 2001 everybody up there loves there's no sadness there's no grief everybody's the best version of themselves because we don't have a physical body we have a persona which we can see so we're the best of ourselves So how do we value that? How do we appreciate that? How do we keep that love going? You know, you look at any relationship. Excuse me. You have your honeymoon period, but then you start falling out of love. So how do we stay in love? We have to keep working on it, guys. We have to keep working on our own emotional status. Okay? And why, that's why we come here. Because here on this planet, we learn all our emotions. Oh my God. Roller coasters. Okay? But ultimately, we must stay true to who we are. So I've just given you one hint how to do this. Stay happy within yourself. Okay? So whenever you say to yourself... I need it today. Jeez, I need my message from my grandmother today. I need her love. I need her support. Please come down and let me know that she's here because I need her so much today. Why are we asking somebody else to make us feel good? Question it, guys. Look within yourself and you say, I need me today. Am I letting me down by being sad? Why would I want to make me sad today? I don't want me to be sad. I don't ever want me to be sad. I want me to be happy. I want me to be excited, full of life. I want me to be young and beautiful, free and do anything I want. Okay? That's where I am. I want me to be the best version of me every day. So when you sit there and you think, oh my God, all this stuff's going to the fans, 
sit there and think, hang on, I'm the one allowing it. So instead of looking at somebody else to try and fix our own problems, fix them ourselves. Is it as bad as it possibly could be? You know, a lady once said to me, she said, oh, Linda, you don't know how bad my life's been. Oh, my husband, he was abusive. He tried to kill me. And I said, oh, he only tried. Mine did. She went, what? She could not fathom that somebody had something worse than her situation. She, because this is what we go into, guys. It's like a tunnel vision. When things go wrong in our lives, we think that it's the worst possible case that anyone has ever experienced, okay? It is natural behavior, okay? So what we've got to do is shut that down and say, you know what, this is not the worst case scenario. My life will continue after this. I have my health and I have my brain. And even if I'm in a wheelchair and I've lost an eye and there's only one finger that I have remaining, I am still going to type with one finger and write my books today. That's the energy that I personally create within myself. Okay? The world is now going into blaming mode. We are blaming everybody else for everything that's going on in our world. I saw a video yesterday of a lady. She's wearing a mask and she's attacking this man who was not wearing the face nappy. She was blaming him for everybody on the planet being sick. And I thought, my God, if I was there, she'd get a mouthful of the truth. Okay? Because if there's anyone getting sick, it's her from the bacteria she's breathing in. And this is now medically proven. Okay? So, we must stop accusing. We must stop judging other people. Just allow them to do what they do. Pick yourself up, guys. Every time you have a thought, just say, what am I creating with that thought? And re-go over it. Hash over it again. So if you say to someone, oh man, why did you do that? Ask yourself, why am I asking why? Why am I judging what he's doing? I just want to allow him to do what he wants because I don't need his energy in my life because the only thing I want in my life is what I need in me today. I want me to be my energy source. I don't want to rely on that guy doing the wrong thing. I don't want to rely on that person over there making me think about him. So now I'm filled with all this emotion about what he's doing. And I don't even know who that guy was. He was a stranger. Okay? Let's go there with an example. So you're thinking probably, what is she on about? I was watching this guy this day doing an illegal U-turn. He nearly took out another car that was coming out of the side street. And so I beat my horn and I said, you stupid idiot, you're at fault. I came home, stupid idiot, stupid idiot. And I sat down at the back and I thought, Linda, why am I so angry over what somebody else did? Do I know that person? No. Is there a chance of me ever seeing him again? Well, I've already lost what he looked like because I was so angry. I didn't even remember what he looked like. So you can forget about that one. And then I thought, why did I allow him to make me feel his anger? He's angry. That's why he's doing that Ill illegal U-turn, yeah? He thinks he's privileged, which is another thing everybody feels these days. Have you noticed how many privileged people there are out there? They're not courteous anymore because they deserve to be given the first spot in the queue. Have you noticed that? How many people are like that now? Okay. So when these all situations happen, don't take on that energy, guys. Okay. We've got enough in our own world to deal with. Okay. So when... You do see somebody else doing something wrong. Ask yourself, do I need that today? 
or do I need me today? Okay? We don't need all the energy from everybody else on the planet. Okay? We look within and we make our own energy. Okay? Think about your hobbies. I don't know. I'll just go there with painting. Okay? If you like drawing and you think, oh, pardon me, you think, oh my God, I can't afford a picture. I can't afford the crayons or the paints or whatever. You can picture it in your mind. Give yourself a blank canvas in your mind and start drawing. It does not have to be physically done. But as long as we're creating it in our brain, that is what is creating that energy that's making us feel good. You know, what? years ago I used to do equestrian horse riding. So every now and again when I feel bad or feel low or feel sad, I imagine I'm sitting on the horse. It was a 16-hand horse that I used to ride. I'd hold him and I'd pull his mane. So I'm feeling that coarse hair of his mane through my fingers. And I think, wow, I'm really on this horse today. And I feel the size of this girth of this horse underneath me and the weight of him as he walked. And I'm on this horse and I can feel myself as he starts to run. And I think, my God, that power that that horse had, I've still got it within me. And that's how we build it, guys, within us, within us, not from some other external force where someone else is making us feel good. We make ourselves feel good. It's so powerful. It is so beautifully gorgeous. It is so magnificent when we think that we have the perspective, that we have the opportunity of being what it's like in heaven, here on earth, if only we give it a chance to be in existence. So go do some meditation, guys. Lie down, sit down, stand quietly in a corner and just relive all those moments of what we've been through. The ones where you feel great. Now, if you know me, you know my best feel great moment. So I'm going to go there with a little story. The year was 1994. And I won first row tickets to a Bon Jovi concert. Not only that, I got tickets to go up on stage. So when I got there with my first husband, the idiot at the ticket centre forgot to take my ticket stub. So I walked in with my armbands because I was first in the first mosh pit area and I had another armband staying I was going up on stage. And I still had my two tickets for first row seats. It's pouring with rain. And this guy comes over to me and he says, Oh, you've got the band, you're going up on stage, follow me. We're going outside of the arena and around the back to come up onto the stage. So as I'm walking around the back in the back car park, here's two people sitting there in the rain and they they said, Oh, you haven't got any tickets, have you, that you want to sell? I said, mate, not only are they first row seats, they're free. Here's my tickets and get in there and watch the show. So how good did I feel giving these guys $200 tickets for front row mosh pit (laughs) and the pouring rain. And they ran, they bolted. They saved themselves some dollars that night. So there I am, I get up on stage and we're singing along to the song Keep the Faith. Keep the Faith. (laughs) What a pivotal song of what I need to do in my own work. Keep the faith. Mother, father, tell your children their time is yet to come. Okay? I have suffered for my anger. There are wars that must be won or however the song goes now. Oh, so I'm on stage. John Bon Jovi singing Keep the Faith 
and I'm sitting there in my total element. And at the end of the song, he comes over to the group of us on stage and he kisses me on the cheek. So what do you think I did? One, I groped his ass. Kissed him straight away. Next thing I know, I've got three security guards holding me down, taking me off the stage. John, John, bye, John, I love you. (laughs) Next day, my sister rings me and she says, Linda, were you wearing a white Bon Jovi shirt? And I said, yes. She said, were you wearing a yellow, um, a blue Bon Jovi baseball cap? I said, yes, because I had my contacts in then and I, I needed the the visor for my glass um, because I wasn't wearing my glasses because it was raining she says do you realise that for the song Keep the Faith they had three story high screens on either side of the the stage and it was you John, you John John you then it was Dave the keyboardist then it was you rocking away mother father tell your children she said we saw the John walk over. We saw John kiss you. We saw the security guards dragging you off. How do you feel? I said, best concert ever. About three years ago, I had a guy here for a development class and he saw my Bon Jovi mug and he said, oh, I remember I was at this concert back in the eight, uh, back in the 90s. This cool chick, she was up on stage, she got dragged off. I said, oh, do you remember what she looked like? And he said, yeah, yeah, she, she had the white Bon Jovi t-shirt on. And I said, that was me. <laughs> wow. Do you see how my energy has just changed by me saying that story? We've all got stories like that, guys. Don't compare your stories to anybody else's, you know. It might be just that once you went for a one-mile hike down the road, but you felt great when you got back. So relive that moment. Relive how good it felt back then and make it now. Because now I am in this Bon Jovi bubble where my day today is going to be great. Because I am, there's no time in heaven. There is no time. So now is everything and everywhere and every time. So even though it happened, oh God, I don't want to say how long ago it was, but it was in the 90s. And look at me now. I'm now in that space again. I can remember the details on my shoes. It was that vivid because I've now created it now back again now. So create these moments in your brain, guys, because now my heart is lifted. My heart chakra is lifted. Now my body, I'm floating in my chair. Now I feel great. Now I can go and function today i can concentrate i'm not worried about all these people doing what they're doing around the world i'm not worried about all these people that we're hearing about dying on the news i'm worried about me and the creation of the energy around me today okay i don't need it today i need me today because me is now so powerful so filled with love appreciation so much value and worth i don't give a stuff what anybody else does in the shopping center i don't give a stuff who does an illegal u-turn because i don't care what they do in their lives i only care what i am creating that i ripple out of me which inflicts others So it turns them into these Bon Jovi bubbles of happiness as well. Hope it's worked for you guys. Go create this magic yourself. And I'll talk to you all again soon. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.